Okay, in this final video, we are going to look at some examples of factory and factoring and expression. Wow, that was hard for me to say for some reason. So let's say I have the expression 3x squared plus x. Okay, so this is in its simplified form in its distributed form. But if I wanted to rewrite it in this factored form, what I would have to do is I would have to look for the greatest common factor between the two terms. So if I look between the two terms, um, they don't really share any numbers, right? This one is three times x squared and this one is just x by itself, but they do share this factor of an x, both terms contain an x. One of them is x squared and one of them is x. So if I factored out an x from this expression, what is left over is whatever I have to multiply by x to get the original terms. So for example, if I factored out an x from 3x squared, remember 3x squared is the same thing as 3 times x times x. So if I factored out one of those x's, I am left with 3x. That's what's left over. And I'm going to keep the addition sign from the original expression. And if I factor out an x from x, then I'm pretty much, I'm not really left with nothing. Like this wouldn't be a zero because if I went back and distributed x times zero is going to be zero. So what's going to be left is a one. So this is 3x squared plus x in its factored expression. Okay. And then a really easy way to check to see if you factored an expression correctly is by just doing the opposite, doing the distributive property, going back and distributing and making sure you end up with what you originally started with, which is what we did. 3x times x is 3x squared. x times 1 is x. So we end up with the same thing that we started with, okay? Um, let's say I have... I'm going to do two more examples. So I'm going to write them kind of small and I'm going to try to kind of split them up between kind of the bottom two sections here. So let's say I'll even draw a little line. So there, um, there's some space. Let's say I have the expression four plus six B times a four plus 60 times a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look between the two terms four and 60 times a and determine what factors they share. Unlike the first example, they do not share a variable. A is only attached to 60. There's no 4A or any A over here with 4. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the numbers and I'm going to think, do 4 and 60 share any factors? Is there numbers that I can multiply to make 4 that I can also multiply with to make 60? And the answer is actually one of the numbers that's in the expression, 4. I can multiply 4 times something to make 4. I can multiply 4 times something to make 60. So if I factor out a 4, what's left over in the group is what I have to multiply by 4 to get my original um, expression. So what times 4 makes 4? That's just 1. What times 4 makes 60? That's 15. But I have to make sure I attach the A with it. And again, <clears throat> I can go back and check my answers by distributing. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 15a is 60a, okay? Let's look at one more example. This one, we're going to do 30z plus 20y, okay? Maybe pause the video for a second and see if you can do this one yourself and then unpause it or hit play again and see if you came up with the right answer. Okay, so... If you came up with 10 times the group 3z plus 2y, you would be correct. If you didn't come up with that, here's how we did it. We essentially pulled out a 10 from 20 and 30 because we can multiply 10 times something to make 30. We can multiply 10 times something to make 20. And z and y are not a common factor between the two terms, so we're just going to leave them attached to their appropriate uh, numbers within the group. And what's left over is um, what we have to multiply by 10 to make 30, what we have to multiply by 10 to make 20, which is three and two respectively. So um, now you need to go do your mastery check. Please refer back to this video if you need help.